Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those that are new here, my name is Alicia and I'm the owner of Alicia Be Creative and on my channel here we do all things Tumblr tutorials, resin related crafts, and other crafting DIY things that you can do at home. So today's tutorial is more of a 101 video and we're going to talk about drips. So drips are a great additive to making your tumbler sparkle and look a little bit different, but there's different types of drips that you can do and different methods and mediums that you can use to establish the type of drip that you're looking to accomplish on your tumbler. So I'm going to talk all about the different mediums that you can use when trying to get that perfect drip on your tumbler, as well as some tips and show you exactly how I do my drips on tumblers. So of course, everything I use in today's tutorial will of course be listed and linked down in the description box. Again, and check that description box out for discount codes as well as links to all of my social media as well as my Facebook group Alicia Be Creative Community. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's tutorial. All right so the first drip that we're going to talk about is probably the most common drip which is the epoxy drip. So I'm using Alumalite's um, Amazing Clear Cast Plus. I would definitely encourage you to use a regular you know two-part epoxy one that is not a facet and the reasoning behind that is because really epoxy drips are just thickened epoxy and so you want as much work time as you can possibly get so using something like a fast set which only has about you know a 20 minute working time you're going to get that epoxy to start to cure before you're really ready to be able to apply your drips to the tumbler so definitely use a regular sort of artist resin epoxy if you will when you're going to be doing your epoxy drips so I'm just just going to mix equal parts of my resin here or my epoxy here and I'm going to get that completely mixed until there are no ribbons and no cloudiness in my epoxy and so there are multiple ways that you can get your epoxy to thicken okay so you can use just your epoxy and let it sit for 20 to 30 minutes until it's the thick consistency that you are looking for to get those drips to slowly drip down the cup. You can use cornstarch to thicken your epoxy or there are actual epoxy thickeners that you can purchase and use. So I'm going to be using an epoxy thickener that I picked up on Amazon. I literally just went to Amazon and searched epoxy thickener and I got this huge bag of epoxy thickener, so I definitely will not need any more of this for the foreseeable future. So I'm going to add just a little bit of paint to color my epoxy so you can see the actual drips on my cup, but you can obviously add any paint you want whatsoever to your drips. Doesn't matter what color, doesn't matter what kind of paint, any paint will work. You can even do alcohol inks if you wanted to, any sort of additive that is going to just color your epoxy, depending on what look you're going for and what the aesthetic of your cup is. So once I get the paint mixed in, I'm then going to mix my epoxy additive. And so I will link the epoxy thickener that I use in the description box as well as any other supplies I use today. Um, but this is was the most inexpensive one that I found. But again, you could even go even more inexpensive and use something like cornstarch, which also will thicken your epoxy. So I'm just going to put a couple scoops of that epoxy thickener into my epoxy and then stir that in evenly. So with this epoxy thickener that I use, I do find that I need to wait a couple minutes in between adding scoops of this in order to make sure that I'm getting the right consistency. I have, <laughs> I have the very first time I used this thickener done too much of the epoxy thickener and my epoxy was so thick that it barely dripped down the cup. So I definitely would you know, do a couple scoops at a time and kind of build up versus adding a whole bunch like I did and then really realizing that my epoxy was way too thick for what I was going for. You definitely also want to make sure that if you're going to add glitter, because you can also add glitter to an epoxy drip while you're mixing it, that if you're going to add glitter or your paint that you do that first before you add your epoxy thickener. You want to do this because glitter and any other additives like acrylic paint, alcohol inks, whatever you're adding, that's going to add a little bit of thickness to your epoxy already. So you don't want to have an already thickened and uh, epoxy on in your cup and then add something else that's going to make it thicker and maybe harder to use. So those are some things that I would just keep in mind when you're doing epoxy drips. I also will say that with epoxy drips, um, you kind of just have to go for it. 
So I have done a lot of epoxy drips and I wouldn't say that they're the easiest drips to do. Definitely not the easiest ones. However, I do love the look of, the, of epoxy drips and I feel like it's perfect for when you want to make like a blood drip on a tumbler or when you want to make, you know, like the bubbly cauldron drips. I feel like using an epoxy drip for those style cups really do give the best look but there are also a couple other ways that I'm going to show you later in the video of how you can accomplish drips on your tumbler that will give you different looks so depending on the aesthetic of the cup that you're going for you might want to choose a different medium based on what you're trying to get your cup to look like. So once your epoxy is thickened to the viscosity that you want it to be you can begin applying it to your cup. So I like to use my metal stir stick in order to apply the epoxy to my cup. I find I have the best, the best sort of um, application of my epoxy when I use my stir stick or if I use a popsicle stick. So something with a flat edge that really can hold a bit of that epoxy and really give me a nice good scoop, if you will, of that epoxy so that I can sort of take that epoxy and paint the top edge rim of the cup that I'm using. So these are just wine glasses that I'm doing epoxy drips on. I'm actually going to be rhinestoning them um, and just giving them away. I just thought that I would show you guys kind of the different style drips that you can do uh, because I don't think that I've ever seen anybody on YouTube that I have seen at least do a tutorial or do a video on doing drips of any sort. And there are so many different ways that you can add drips to your cup. And for me, I personally love a drip on a cup. I don't know what it is it's just so cute it's so pretty it just adds to your entire cup aesthetic that I felt like I needed to put this together for y'all so hopefully you guys enjoy this so I'm just going to continue by using my stir stick to scoop up a little bit of that thickened epoxy and just continue to go around my cup so as I am putting the epoxy on the top rim of the cup you are noticing that the epoxy is starting to drip down so the reason why you wait for your epoxy to thicken is so that your epoxy is going to do a slow drip down your cup. If you don't wait for your epoxy to thicken, obviously your drips are going to drip really, really fast and you're not really going to have enough time to get all the way around your cup before your epoxy is basically touching your tabletop. So definitely wait either the 20 to 30 minutes for your epoxy to thicken or use one of the mediums that I mentioned as an additive to your epoxy to get your epoxy to be a thicker viscosity. That way you have more working time when it comes to applying your drips to the tumbler. So I'm going to continue to add this. I really wanted this epoxy drip to be really long. Um, I saw a cup from Lindsay Briggs, who is the owner of Brave Danger Designs. She did a beautiful black drip, and then she did rhinestones all over the tumbler, uh, but left the drip alone, and it just was so beautiful. So I'm trying to recreate something like that on this style uh, wine glass here um, because I just absolutely loved the look and I had to try it for myself. So again, I'm just going to continue to go around and what I'm also making sure too is that at my top rim, obviously as the epoxy starts to drip, it's going to be thinnest at your rim. So making sure that I'm getting a nice even layer all the way around and that you're not able to see the color of the cup through my paint. So this is a little bit of a translucent paint. Obviously, if you use a more pigmented paint, you're not going to have as much issue with your epoxy. Um, you being able to see the paint through your epoxy. Um, so that's also something to keep in mind. Or you can just base paint your cup to be the same color of your drip. That way you don't kind of have to worry about that at all. So just continue to add. And if you are in a situation where you feel like your epoxy is dripping too fast or you feel like you've messed up, you can always use a baby wipe or rubbing alcohol to wipe off the drip and try and start over. I also would advise that if you're going to do a drip on a tumbler that you do it over an epoxied surface. So I didn't epoxy this cup because I'm only doing a drip on this cup, but I definitely would say that if you're going to do this on a cup that you've already created, that I would try it, I would do it over an epoxied surface and not sort of over the base layer of your design, if that makes sense. That's where you're going to get the best look. So this is the final look of my drip. And another tip that I find is that if my epoxy is dripping too fast for me um, or that I'm moving too slowly, you can tip your cup upside down and that's going to slow down the drip. But obviously you have to be mindful that the drip doesn't then go in the reverse direction too far and over the rim of your cup. So kind of little tidbits and things that I've picked up and learned throughout the process of doing epoxy drips. Um, and I hope that that's helpful. So let's go ahead and we're going to move on to the next style of drips and that is going to be using my favorite puffy paint. 
Okay, so now let's get into fabric paint drips. Okay, so I have two paints here. I have a puffy paint from Tulip and I have just the slick fabric paint. So I personally use both. I do know a lot of people like to use the puffy paint because it is a little bit um, thicker and fluffier, if you will, when it dries on your cup, whereas the slick paint remains much more flat. So it kind of depends on what you're going with. If you're someone like me who uses fabric paint to do your drips, I'm always usually adding glitter to my drips. So I can interchange between puffy or the slick paint and still get the same gorgeous results. So with a fabric paint drip, it is one of the easiest drips you'll ever do. All you need to do, and I showed this in my last tutorial, but all you have to do is use your paint and make a nice thin or thick line all the way around that top rim of your cup. And then once you've gone all the way around, you could begin to tap your cup either on a surface or on the bottom of your hand, which I like to do um, to get the paint to start to flow down in a drip. Um, you can always go back and add more paint. So I'd advise you to start with a thinner line and then go thicker in the next layers, if you will. That way you you can get kind of the drip you're, look you're looking for because obviously you can always add two. It's much harder to take away. Now with fabric paint, much like epoxy, should you mess up, um, if you're doing this over an epoxied surface, you can easily wipe this up with a baby wipe or um, rubbing alcohol on a paper towel and it will wipe right up and you can start over. Um, so that is one thing that's nice about using fabric paint is it is really forgiving, whereas epoxy usually make a hot mess when you're trying to clean it up in order to start over, but it is still doable in both aspects. What I love to do with fabric paint drips is add glitter to them. So I'm adding this glitter called Spiffy, which is from 4K Glitter from Vinyl Gallery. I'll link that down in the description box. And so I'm going to do a little bit of like a double ombre here, similar to what I did in my skull and my smoky skull tumbler I did last week. And I'm going to add a little bit of this lilac blooms over top, which is like a super fine lilac colored purple that I thought would blend really nicely into my spiffy here. So the only other thing with doing fabric paint that I want to mention here is they are sh extremely easy and you can really use these for anything. I personally like to do them when I want a glitter drip. Um, but I also feel like it's a really great look for like a, an ice cream cone cup or like a Sunday themed cup or like a cup that is going to get some polymer clay sprinkles really quick and easy to do. And it dries within 24 hours. So the only other thing I will mention too is don't try and clean up your paint or your glitter until that paint has completely dried. I have made many mistakes and tried to take my little fine paintbrush and clean up all those little nooks and crannies. Don't do it. I know you're tempted, but don't do it. I definitely would advise you to wait. So the last and final drip that I'm going to show you is the hot glue gun drips. So I'm using a really high heat gorilla glue gun and some colored glue sticks that you can buy from Amazon. I think you can get them in Michaels or most craft stores as well. And um, you can get lots of different colors. So that's what I love about these glue sticks is they come in so many different colors and you really can do some really awesome and beautiful drips. I see these most often for doing blood drips, which is what I'm accomplishing here, as well as doing candlestick drips, which I'll show you towards the end of this clip here. Um, but how you apply them is you're going to set your glue gun to high heat, put your glue stick in, and you are just going to, again, go along that edge. I do this in small sections and I kind of do a small section at a time. And then you're going to see me use my heat gun. And the reason why I use my heat gun is the heat of the heat gun then makes the glue stick start to run a little bit more and then I can get my glue or my hot glue to run farther and make my drips longer. It also helps with smoothing in section to section so that if you're trying to get one even looking drip you can use that heat gun to make sure that there aren't any like weird creases where it looks like you went in section by section. So I hope that that makes sense and I'm sorry that of course my uh, phone decided to cut off the clip where I showed you this this entire process um, but hopefully that makes sense um, using my heat gun just really is something that I've picked up and seen in a couple other groups that's really been helpful when using hot glue for drips and you really can get really cool and unique looks 
Um, this would be perfect for like a Maker's Mark, like alcohol themed bottle, that wax look. Um, again, candlestick drips, like I'm showing you right here, I'm working out a Hocus Pocus cup. And so candlestick drips, it's perfect for this. You literally just do strips up and down and just kind of build on top until you get the look that you like. And so I absolutely love doing these style drips. And I hope that everything that I've showed you today has been helpful. Of course, if you have any questions for me about any of the drips that I did today, definitely make sure to leave your questions down in the, in the comment section. And I will definitely be sure to answer those questions for you and give you different tips and things that maybe I forgot to mention in the video. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's Tumblr Drips 101 video. Definitely make sure to tell me which drip style is your absolute favorite and which one you're looking forward to trying. And of course, if you have any other comments or suggestions for me, leave those down below as well. I love reading and responding to you guys' comments. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.